Over millions of years, dinosaurs occupied numerous niches in prehistoric ecosystems. These animals diversified into a vast array of shapes, sizes, and appearances, ultimately establishing themselves as the dominant group during the Mesozoic era. However, in the eyes of the general public, the term dinosaur is often used broadly to describe any extinct, bizarre-looking creature. This assumption isn't always accurate, as dinosaurs were not the only successful creatures of prehistoric times. In today's video, we'll explore the most common instances of this misidentification, and by the end, you may even come to the realization that your favorite dinosaur wasn't a dinosaur at all. So what exactly defines a dinosaur, and where did they come from? Their story begins with Archosauria, a group of diapsid sauropsids encompassing all crocodilians, pterosaurs, and both avian and non-avian dinosaurs. The earliest known members of this group emerged in the early Triassic period, around 250 million years ago, following the catastrophic Permian-Triassic extinction event. Then, during the middle to late Triassic, Approximately 10 to 15 million years later, Archosauria diverged into the lineage known as Dinosauria. Although, when dinosaurs first appeared, they were not the dominant creatures we often associate them with. Instead, they existed in more primitive forms, significantly smaller in size compared to their later descendants. Many habitats during this time were still occupied by therapsids, a group that eventually gave rise to modern mammals, and other archosaurs, particularly members of the crocodilian lineage, Pseudosuchia. However, most of these other creatures became extinct before the end of the Triassic period, presenting dinosaurs with an opportunity to fill the ecological niches left by the extinct species. The triumph of dinosaurs, however, wasn't solely due to the extinction of other groups. Unlike lizards or crocodiles, whose legs run parallel to the ground, all dinosaurs had their legs positioned beneath their bodies, resulting in an upright stance. This unique anatomical feature, absent in any other reptile, allowed for more efficient energy conservation during movement. Now that we've briefly clarified what a dinosaur is, let's move on to the first and most common example of a prehistoric animal being mistakenly labeled as a dinosaur. While dinosaurs reigned supreme on land, the world above them was ruled by a completely different group of reptiles. Named winged lizards in Greek, the pterosaurs were the first group of vertebrates to take to the skies. These magnificent creatures diversified into a remarkable array of shapes and sizes. While some had wingspans barely reaching 25 centimeters, or about 10 inches, others, like the Quetzalcoatlus, reached the size of a fighter jet. The fact that they lived alongside dinosaurs often leads some people to mistakenly group them together. Some even go as far as calling them flying dinosaurs. However, this terminology is inaccurate, as there were no flying non-avian dinosaurs. So, if they're not dinosaurs, what exactly are they? We've already established that both dinosaurs and pterosaurs belong to the Archosauria group. This implies that, despite being two distinct families, they must have shared a common ancestor before diverging from each other approximately 250 million years ago. The evolutionary journey of pterosaurs has long puzzled paleontologists. Initially, it was believed that they evolved from small, arboreal reptiles gliding between trees using skin attached to their limbs. However, recent discoveries suggest that pterosaurs likely descended from small, bipedal reptiles known as Lagerpetidae, or rabbit reptiles, which roamed the ground. Despite lacking wings, these creatures shared numerous anatomical features with pterosaurs. Thus, the remaining question is, how did pterosaurs gain their wings? The problem lies in the absence of transitional fossils, as the oldest known pterosaur fossils already display features fully adapted to a flying lifestyle. With no intermediary fossils to bridge this gap, the answer to this may have been lost forever alongside these extraordinary animals during the Cretaceous-Paleogene extinction event 66 million years ago. 
Despite their distinctions, however, pterosaurs were still more closely related to dinosaurs than our next case. Dinosaurs not only lacked the ability to conquer the skies, they were also limited to land. As a result, creatures that adapted to an aquatic lifestyle in the marine environment are not considered dinosaurs. These prehistoric creatures, referred to as marine reptiles, unlike pterosaurs or dinosaurs, did not belong to the Archosauria group. Instead, they evolved along their own separate lineage. In fact, these animals became so specialized for life in the sea that they lost the ability to return to land to lay eggs. Instead, as opposed to dinosaurs, they developed the ability to give birth to life young. However, as reptiles, they still required regular access to the surface for air. The migration of reptiles from land to sea began during the early Triassic period. Among the first groups were the ichthyosaurs, which, despite their name translating to fish lizard in Greek, were not related to fish at all. With their dolphin-like body design, they were likely highly efficient and swift swimmers, equipped with unusually large eyes adapted for deep, dark ocean waters. In the later Jurassic period, the expansion of marine reptiles resulted in the emergence of plesiosaurs, animals easily distinguished by their four paddle-like limbs. This group comprised both the long-necked and small-headed plesiosaurids, along with the short-necked and large-headed pliosaurids, which ultimately rose as the dominant predators of Jurassic oceans. However, in the late Cretaceous, another group, the mosasaurs, overtook their dominance. Defined by their large skulls and snake-like bodies, they reached colossal sizes, surpassing even the famous megatheropods on land. Unfortunately, none of the previously mentioned groups survived the catastrophic KPG event, meeting the same fate as the pterosaurs and dinosaurs. Our last case of misidentification takes us much further back in time, well before the first dinosaurs even appeared. During the Permian period, Earth was inhabited by creatures that bore resemblance to dinosaurs in many ways, yet they were actually more closely related to humans. Upon closer examination of their anatomy, one distinguishing feature sets them apart from dinosaurs. While dinosaurs had their limbs positioned beneath their bodies and inhabited terrestrial environments, they also shared another critical characteristic. Two openings in their skull behind each eye, a trait common to all diapsids, and thus to all archosaurs as well. However, our following examples are not diapsids, Rather, they belong to the group known as synapsids, one of the two major clades of vertebrates, with the other being sauropsids, a group that encompasses modern reptiles as well as their extinct relatives like dinosaurs. Instead, synapsids, which include all mammals, including humans, are identified by a single opening in the skull behind their eyes. Initially considered a later lineage of reptiles leading to mammals, synapsids were termed mammal-like reptiles. However, relatively recent studies focusing on differences in their skulls have reshaped our understanding of synapsid origins. All reptiles are now classified within sauropsids, separating synapsids into their own distinct taxonomic group. Consequently, the term mammal-like reptiles has become outdated, and these animals are now referred to as stem mammals or proto-mammals. Traditionally, synapsids are divided into the more primitive and now informally named pelicosaurs, and the later and more advanced therapsids. Pelicosaurs first emerged during the late Carboniferous and persisted into the Permian. One of the most famous members of this group is Dimetrodon, known for its large sail-like structure on its back, believed to assist in regulating body temperature. This predator, measuring 4.5 meters or 15 feet in length, thrived 35 million years before the first appearance of dinosaurs and likely preyed on other members of its family, such as the plant-eating Edifosaurus. However, during the Middle Permian, Pelicosaurs were replaced by their more successful descendants, the Therapsids, which included the largest terrestrial animals of their time. Despite their dominance, around 250 million years ago, therapsids were severely impacted by the most catastrophic extinction in Earth's history, known as the Great Dying. Among the groups that survived this event were the Cynodonts, which eventually gave rise to true mammals. 
Yet even they were gradually displaced by the rapidly diversifying reptiles during the Middle Triassic period. It is unfortunate that these remarkable animals are often mistaken for dinosaurs, as each deserves to be recognized as part of its respective group. Hopefully, this video has helped to debunk this misconception once and for all. Paradoxically, there is one group of animals that some might least expect to be part of the Dinosauria group, birds. But more about that topic in another video.